Thank you, Eric. I appreciate it. I just got back from the, uh, the hotel there where the training is being done. And boy, we just kicked off the marketing section today. And this is where people really start getting excited. You can imagine. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so tell us a little bit about the class. I mean, tell us, uh, you know, who's in there, what's, what their backgrounds are, and just uh, kind of give us a little touch about what you know about the that. The interesting thing is that it's a wide variety of people, of course, as usual, but there are two doctors in this class. Wow. And people, people find it hard to believe that we have doctors, I mean actual credential MDs who come through our training, but what happens, Eric, I think is that the word gets out as to what we've done and doctors decide, you know what, there's probably more money to be made in the, uh, the collection of the money for other doctors than there is in my own practice. And so it's rare. It's not like a doctor would, uh, you know, buy our license and come through our training because he just wanted to have our system. You could right. certainly find other billing systems out there uh, a lot less than our $25,000 uh, license fee. But they they decide they want to just change uh you know uh, their focus and 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 get into the money side. As one doctor told me, he said, "I I, I was in the health side and taking care of patients, but I wanted the money side." So he got it. <laughs> anyway, well, yes, it's it's a great group of people. We do have one lady there, Eric, this time that uh, has had her own medical billing company now for about eight years, and uh, the reason she came down and and bought our license is because she said, "Patrick, I I've just not been able to grow it. I I work for a company." doing the medical billing and then that company shut down and so some of the doctors I was billing for let me continue doing their billing but I, I don't know how to go out and actually get more doctors so I said well you come to the right place we've we figured that out in the last 22 years no doubt about it well let's talk to people about this particular webinar I know one of the things you want to, to bring out is is that at the end of the webinar today we're actually going to put in the handout section a copy of today's webinar Yes, yes, we've got a printed uh, PDF uh, version of all of these slides, so if you have a spouse or a partner that you'd like to share this with, we also record these, of course, and uh, we'll send you the link to the recording through email, but the printout, if you want that, uh, we're actually going to drop it uh, here in the control panel of GoToWebinar uh, right towards the end of the webinar here, just to uh, make sure that everybody has a printout. And I think everybody knows now where the questions are, and so what we're going to ask you to do is please ask us questions during the webinar. This is your webinar. Uh, feel free to ask Patrick and me any questions. If we can't get to all the questions at the end, they'll be answered by your uh, the person that actually invited you to this particular webinar today. So please ask all the questions that you want to during the webinar. Patrick, uh, this is a little bit, is this, uh, is this you or is this Adam? Who is this the young guy <laughs> to the left over here? Yeah, that, that picture is so old. That looks like my son Adam kind of now there on the left. That's me and my wife, Linda. This is back in 1987. And the reason I like showing this picture is there's Adam, as you see now. Uh, he was about 11, I think, and Sarah was about 6. And uh, that's when my wife started actually doing the medical billing out of our home, starting the business there here in Fort Worth. And uh, now, of course, Adam is uh, 40 years old. He's the president of the company. Yep, there you go. So we're keeping it in the family, aren't we? It's a family business, uh, and again, we're one of those rare families that can work together <laughs> without killing each other, but it's worked out good for us, and, and it's worked out for a lot of our licensees, too, because they put their kids to work and uh, get a tax write-off. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> we want the tax write-offs, that's, that's for sure. <laughs> right. well, Patrick, we, we've got this one titled up here at the top. There are basically two paths that you can take getting into medical billing, and it's a great graphic here recently we, we both found is that uh, you can go the entrepreneurial way or you can go the employee way. So that's I think that's what we want to kind of tap into right now. Yeah, and what we mean by that, folks, is if you if you decide that you actually just want to go take a, a course in medical billing at, at college or over the Internet, for example, uh, that's probably because you want to go and get that schooling uh, to be a, an employee, in other words, to go to work for a doctor. Now, that's a tough road to hoe because it can take you two or three years to get a job that uh, really doesn't pay as much as what you can make uh, doing the billing for doctors, I mean, as in your own business. So uh, Eric did some great research here and found out that you can go and get a diploma in about six months uh, that would cost you somewhere up to $15,000. And you can also, uh, of course, go out and actually go to a college, maybe a local college, get an associate's degree. That would take you a couple of years. And that might cost you $24,000. These are just averages, of course. It might be lower or higher in different parts of the country. 
and and then you'd go out and get a job that might pay you an average of about 38,700. Now that's if you've got a degree, Eric, in uh, as a coder, right, a medical coder, because yeah. medical coding, uh, that could even take you three or four years to get that. Uh, that's a pretty specialized thing. The great thing is you don't have to know anything about the coding because our system has all that built in. None of the people that come through our training are coders. Well, I think we've had a couple, I mean, over the years, but most people don't have that and don't need it. Yeah, and so folks, if you can see this, I mean, at the very bottom, we've got, uh, for those that are going to be on the webinar and you're going to get a print of this later on, you can go find this information for yourself. It's just out on the internet, so you can go check this out. Uh, so now what we want to do is kind of take you down the other path, and what, what happens if you want to become an entrepreneur, like getting into business with American Business Systems? Yeah, that's a whole different path, folks. Uh, becoming an entrepreneur means that you want to actually start your own business. You want to be the boss. You don't want to work for somebody else as an employee. And so with American Business Systems, you can actually make, as I indicated a while ago, uh, more than you would working for a doctor. And we're going to prove that to you right now, right, Eric? Absolutely. So we're going to we're going to head on over to our website. And uh, folks, I'm going to open this up so everybody can see it and get, get to it. And you can see that we're just going straight to our our website here. We're going to go to right here where it says income potential. Now remember, folks, when we showed you the slide just a moment ago about how much you can make if you go down the path of going to school, then you're going to end up working for a doctor. 35, 38,000, probably about the top of where you're going to be able to go. So let's just kind of take a look here. Uh, medical billing income calculator. So uh, Patrick, I know that we've got this here. Uh, I think we ought to obviously talk about the important note that that's down at the bottom. It's formulas and calculations. These are just based upon some actual licensees numbers that we've got, but this is no way to guarantee or uh, give you a statement of projected income. However, it's pretty doggone close. It's kind of like those weight loss uh, ads that show real skinny people and, and say there's no way, that the fine print says there's no way you're ever going to look this good. But, That's right. but one person has. Now, in our case, we let you decide what kind of revenue that you think you can make by putting in some numbers. Eric, right. do you mind, can you blow that up, you know, zoom in on that a little I bit? Can. Yep. It is tiny. Uh, but, but here's what we're going to do. Folks, we have five different fields that you actually can type some numbers in, and we've already got numbers there just to start with something. But we'll explain each one of those as we go along. Let's start with that first one, Eric. Number of doctors is pretty obvious. You either want one client or you want a dozen. Just start with one to see what one would have. And then the second question there, Eric, what has that got to do with? That's the number of patients that the doctor is going to see during the day. And I think if all of us that are on the webinar today live, or if you're going to listen to it a little bit later recorded, you, when you go to the doctor, you feel like there's 20 people in the office at that particular time. So <laughs> we're putting a very low number. But I think what I'd like to do, Patrick, I'd like to kind of, bump that up just by five. I mean, because we're starting to see that it's more average about 25 patients that a doctor will actually see at the end of the day. And then the average number of days the office is open, uh, we usually just leave five in there because most doctors' offices are. However, some of them close uh, one day of the week, so you'd change that to four if that was the case. Maybe it's a surgeon who only goes into the office, though, uh, three days, so you know, you'd change that to three. But we'll leave that for, for five. Now let's talk about those uh, those charges down there. So if you were charging 6% of, uh, of the average claim amount of $100, we're going to show you what you'd get. But Eric, you want to explain that just a little bit, uh, the range there and so forth? Sure. Yeah, the range for the percentage can can range between 5% all the way up to 6 to 7 or 8%. And that is just a kind of a, um, that's the window of what yeah, we quiet. That's, uh, that's about what it is. Yeah, so we're going to say with six, and we're even going to say on the lower end of just a hundred dollars. Folks, again, you know what, we're not trying to exaggerate the numbers. You can hardly go to the doctor for less than a hundred bucks. So we're just going to say a hundred dollars. So we're going to just use these numbers, and we're going to submit this. And what it's going to do is going to bring us back a calculation for us to all see. So you can see here that the total gross income is thirty-nine thousand dollars for one doctor seeing twenty-five patients a day charging 6% of $100 of each one of those. Patrick, that's more than what someone can make if they go work for a doctor eight hours a day. Yeah, I think that number we saw uh, was 38.2. Uh, but anyway, uh, now let's talk about this gross number here, folks. You do have costs, of course, in, in running a business. 
Now, assuming that you start out of your home, you shouldn't have any rent costs or electricity or anything like that because you're already paying that, right, in your, in your home. And that's what most of our licensees do. Some of them have been in business for years and, and still right. have an office in their home because the doctors don't come to your office. You go to their office. So it's kind of like being an insurance agent. You could work out of your home as an uh, Allstate agent, right, and, and you would go and visit people uh, in their homes. The same way here. You're going to have some expenses, though. If you don't have a phone, you're going to have to phone. But, uh, but Eric, we've got people who just use their cell phone and, and use a right. what we call a virtual office number that, you know, for $20 a month can ring on their cell phone as if it's a you know an actual office number. Yeah. And, uh, and then, of course, you have to have a computer. It would be handy to have a printer. So we're assuming that you either have those or you don't. Let's do one more, one more calculation. We're going to use that number 25 again. Uh, we're just going to put that there. And we're just going to go bump it up to what we see as the average is 150. Now, folks, understand you can put whatever numbers you, you want in here. And again, these are just average numbers, but we're going to sit with the 6%. The doctor seeing 25 patients in a full day, charging $150 per person, basically to, to be seen by the doctor. Remember, you're charging 6% of that. So again, let's just see what the numbers look like right there. Oh, substantially more, huh? Just just by raising the average amount of the claim. And Eric, there are specialists, of course, who charge a whole lot more than that. If you find, a, you know, even a psychologist might charge three hundred dollars for a session. Right. Uh, there's hundreds, uh, I guess, of specialties that you can bill for. A neurologist, uh, a cardiologist, all those, of course, would be maybe five thousand dollar average claims. Uh, they might not have as many, of course, but. Anyway, the point is, folks, go out and plug your own numbers in and do your own calculations. We don't want to give you any numbers. You come up with the numbers your own. Realistically, just plug in and play with that calculator and see how that comes out. Absolutely. And before we pull off of that, let me just tell, you, tell everybody, to, to, to run 25 claims per day, Patrick, what is that, an hour and a half, maybe two less than two hours a day? Yeah. Yeah, you can do a claim in uh, under two minutes, so it doesn't take long to do 25 claims a day. No. Uh, we have, of course, licensees who are doing just the billing themselves. They haven't hired anybody, and they're handling you know, four and five doctors. So it just depends on how much volume each one of those doctors have as to whether or not you might get to the point where you need to hire somebody else. But if you do, that can just be a contract person that you contract with, uh, and they can work out of their home, too, because you can manage everything over our cloud-based system. Absolutely. Well, that's the I difference between you, those two paths. Yeah, absolutely. I think you can tell the difference. Uh, hey, Michael's you're... asking a question here. Uh, yeah. Michael's asking, is it standard to charge an upfront fee to the doctors? Yes, it is, Michael. Uh, we teach our licensees that doctors are used to paying uh, what they call setup fees for most anything that they purchase or get into. Medical billing, there's typically a setup fee for that. Now, again, it's your business. You can charge nothing if you, don't, if you don't want to, but we show you how to get sometimes up to $1,500, $2,500 per doctor that's in the office as a setup fee. Well, that's yours to keep. That's your upfront money. Now, you do have some costs, of course, with our the technology to get onto the system for doing the billing for the doctor, but that's minimal cost. I'm talking about, uh, you know, you know, maybe 10% of that. Yeah, right. All right. Let's talk about as a business owner, Patrick, I know that we've, we've kind of talked about the difference between, you know, going to school and then being an entrepreneur, but if I'm going to go down this route of an entrepreneur as a business owner, what is, what is all of this that I'm looking at right here? Well, the thing is that for most people who get into medical billing, they have to buy software that does the billing, right? Medical billing software. In our case, it's completely different, folks. We're going to show you, in fact, in the classroom. Uh, on Monday, we had people doing medical billing, Eric, using our system. Uh, it's a cloud-based system, which means all you need is a connection to the Internet and a browser, uh, just like you're using right now to watch this webinar, and you can log into our system from anywhere in the world that has that Internet connection and, and run your business. And so it's all cloud-based. All cloud-based, and mainly all of our services, all these ancillary services that we have are pretty much all cloud-based too. I mean, there's nothing that's really rely, uh, residing on anybody's computer anymore. It's all in the cloud. I mean, it makes it makes it nice to be able to work from home. You got to pick up, you got to go somewhere, you got to maybe meet a doctor later on. Uh, in between that, that, that time you're meeting one doctor and another doctor, you could pull off and actually do billing in your car if you've got a hotspot connection. 
Yeah, you could actually run this off of your iPhone if you had real good eyes, <laughs> or your iPad, I guess. Uh, the doctors actually used the iPad uh, in that previous uh, screenshot. We had uh, a picture of an iPad because our electronic medical record system is used by the doctor when they're encountering, I mean, talking to the patient. And so right. they can have different things on that and, and record everything they're doing with the patient right there in the system. So all of these, yeah, there's no software. We're not going to send you a stack of CDs that you have to install and keep updated. This is all through the cloud, folks, and that is the future. Don't let anybody fool you. There's only one true cloud-based system, and that's one that has no components loaded onto your hard disk whatsoever. Besides, you certainly don't want to keep the patient data there. That gets very, very scary when it comes to the rules and regulations for patient privacy. It certainly allows what we're demonstrating right here. It allows you to do the entire revenue cycle management directly from iClaim, directly from our all of our, our systems here. Uh, we go into much more detail again on some other webinars. So, folks, if you're if you're a little bit familiar with medical billing or you're not really familiar, just know that everything from claim submission to management to reporting to claims preparation is all done in one central location, which is our web-based iClaim platform. It's pretty pretty amazing uh, that you can do that. Let's talk about the training workshop. Patrick, I know a lot of people ask about uh, where is the workshop held? Can I do it online? Let's talk about where we hold it here. All right, before we do, can I answer this question from Richard? He's oh, in this cloud-based system. He says, have you ever had a time where the cloud system went down? No. no. It, just, it just doesn't happen. In today's world, Richard, we have what's called redundancy, meaning it's not just one set of servers that's running the software. There's another set that's completely synced with that one in a different part of the country. If one went down completely, I mean, was you know an earthquake sucked it into the earth. The other one would kick on immediately, and you'd never know it. And of course, those servers are backed up off-site each night as well. So no, we don't have any problem with that. There is no downtime for ours. Now, if we do need to upgrade it, of course, there might be a little notice that pops up on your screen uh, during the day that says, you know, at 3 a.m. to 4 a.m. on Sunday morning, we're going to do some installations. So you know, don't get on the system. You won't be able to get on the system at that time. But I think that's the, uh, the only time I've ever seen that happen is once, and, and the, the good thing about it is for those that know anything about IT, because there are two major servers out there, we can be working on one of them and while the other one's running, and so whenever it's time to do the switch, we just switch it over to this other one, it's, and it's like you're not even, there's really no, even no downtime, because we can work off of both major servers, so it's, right. it really works very nicely. Yeah. All right. And, yes, so of course, and of course, uh, Pooja says, is it, uh, does it have all the HIPAA compliance requirements? Yes, it is fully HIPAA compliant, and we have documentation that we can show you. Uh, yes, that's, that's a good question because HIPAA is the rules and regulations by the U.S. government for making sure that you know, everything is uh, privacy uh, protected. Yes, absolutely. All right, tell us a little bit about uh, people coming into the Dallas area, Patrick, and what we do here, why we do a live training in a, in, a, in a training classroom setting. Yes, and I think you may have paused your screen. We're back to the... Uh... There we go. Yeah. There we go. Uh, well, let's talk about this, folks. We, we do hold this in Dallas here at a Marriott Hotel. Now, the reason we haven't given a lot of details in the past is because, again, you folks are just doing your due diligence. You don't need to know all the details about that until you have committed that you're going to come down here. But just be assured, it's a very nice uh, Marriott Suites uh, hotel and very nice. You, you, you'll enjoy your stay. The training is actually done right there in that hotel as well. That's important for you to know that you once you get here, you never have to pack up and, and go in the morning somewhere by car or taxi or something like that. It's held right there in their conference room in the hotel. Uh, so basically, we've even put some details here that some of you might even be wondering when you fly in, you're actually flying into DFW International Airport. That's the big one right between Dallas and Fort Worth. And the hotel is only about uh, maybe 10 minutes away. So they have a shuttle. When you get there, you just call the hotel and they come and pick you up from the airport and take you right in there. Of course, you could get an Uber car probably for about 10 bucks too if you wanted just to uh, uh, have a ride over there yourself. 
The classes are Monday through Thursday, 8 to 5, and then Friday, 8 to 1. We let you out early on Friday because we want you to be able to book a flight, at, say, at 3 o'clock or after uh, to be able to get home in time for the weekend and not have to stay another night. Uh, lunches are provided by ABS. Uh, the hotel does a marvelous job of preparing all those meals for us, and we supply those, of course. And then your licensing fee, though, does not include your travel costs or your hotel. So I tell people, look, just get here however you, however you can, you know. Uh, get on a motorcycle, uh, drive a car, take a bus, uh, fly. If you've got some free miles, use that. But the hotel, of course, cost is, is a very special price that they've got there at the Marriott just for us. I think, Eric, with taxes, it's going to run around 700 for the whole uh, week. Yeah. So it's, not a, it's not a big expense, but you have to count that in as well. Yeah, and, and again, most of the meals are provided because the, the the hotel already has a breakfast. We're providing lunch, so you know, as Patrick says, it's a it's a small investment if you think about it. For you to really come just to find out if we're for real, I mean, because we're going to show you at the end of the end of the uh, webinar today that you know everything's guaranteed here. So you'll see what we're what we're talking about. Yeah, that. the hotel has a they have what they call a happy hour. It's free beer and wine for a couple of hours and of course they have some finger foods there that some people just eat that and they're fine uh, but there's about 25 restaurants uh, within driving distance and the shuttle there at the hotel will take you within what is it Eric three miles or something like that yeah, three to five miles yeah yeah and then Very the cheap. world and then the Texas's largest mall is right across the parking lot you can literally go out the front door and walk over there in about two minutes yeah and Patrick, it's, it's interesting. Richard just asked that question, is the hotel stay for the week part of the fee? And, and obviously, Richard, hopefully you can see that, that uh, we were able to answer that for you anyway. So uh, that's good to know. Tell us about our lead instructor, Patrick. I mean, let's uh, talk about who, who is this Cynthia Anderson? Well, Cynthia came through our training about uh, eight years ago, and she's right. been building her business. Uh, she, uh, when we lost our last instructor, uh, she came to us and said, I, I believe I could do that. So we gave her a try. And I'm telling you, Eric, the people just rave about Cynthia because she is still very excited about the business. Uh, yeah. she, you're learning from somebody who's actually doing it. Now, Eric and I and my other staff members, of course, could train uh, on the, the details of this, but it's not like having somebody who's out there doing it. And uh, right. it yeah. makes all the difference in the world. Uh, Cynthia is certified by us as a certified medical revenue manager, and uh, she has a great agenda, as you can see. Eric put that on the screen there. Those are some of the topics that we cover. Uh, it doesn't look like a lot just there on that one slide, but believe me, folks, each one of those is, uh, you know, hour and hour and a half sessions, and so it mounts up pretty fast. You're, you're going to get a lot of information in these five days, believe me. There is no doubt about it. I mean, you're going to get packed in with so much information, whether it's, you know, I mean, just to, just look at any of these. I mean, it, it, it deals with that. And I actually want to go back up to a question here from uh, Adnan, I hope I got your, your name correct, and your, that question is actually going to be answered during the week of training. And, and, and the question is, is, is it correct that doctors are only those doctors who are pri uh, private uh, practices? Uh, can we market clients uh, to those who are part of hospitals? How does that work and how do we identify the clients and etc.? Patrick, I mean, that's what you went up there today to actually get started is, is how to identify potential doctors, where to find them, uh, can we target market to doctors that are maybe actually housed in a, in a hospital? Uh, you want to kind of talk a little bit about that because it's, it's a great segue here because of some of the things that are being taught actually this week. Yeah, your, your market is so huge, folks, that I don't even know how to uh, start to explain to you how many specialties there are out there. Any doctor that's actually billing themselves or having someone else already bill on what's called the 1500 form, that's a standard form that uh, Medicare came up with, uh, you can bill for them. And so, yes, a doctor doesn't have to be in private practice. They could be a hospitalist that literally goes to the hospital each day, but they don't have the hospital do their billing. They do their own billing. Well, you can do their billing for them. And you certainly can. There's no yeah. doubt. So we're, you know, we only have limited time today. We got about 30 more minutes, but we want to make sure that you can see this. Obviously, you're going to get a, uh, a print out of this, so you can kind of start going through some of this information yourself. But we're going to just touch on a couple of the, the key topics there. And the first one is we're going to talk about, obviously, is going to be uh, the iClaim uh, practice management system. Patrick, uh, this is really where it all starts right here. Yeah, folks, we, uh, 
our, our, our billing system, we've, we've branded it uh, iClaim. Uh, actually, this is the cloud-based system that we were talking to uh, you about earlier. And as you can see on the flyer there that we have for you to use for your marketing, it actually has pictures there of uh, the real live data that's over the internet, but, but again, through a cloud-based system. So this is what you'll be using to actually do the billing. It has a scheduling system built in that you can give access to the doctor's office so they can do their scheduling on it. Uh, and you, you uh, restrict, of course, the people who log into the system because you're the administrator of it uh, as to who can get access to what. But it's a tremendous system, folks. This is the leading edge technology that's out there. And you do not want to miss seeing a demo of this if you can. Uh, Eric, right. you tell about how they can see this actual demo? Yeah, folks, uh, I mean, I've already done a couple of them. I did one today. I did one yesterday. I'm actually doing two more next week. Uh, folks, if you'd like to see a demonstration of the iClaim software, get, get in touch with your business coach that you're working with. You'll be, even because you don't know maybe anything about medical billing, you yourself will kind of be blown away about some of the things that the system can actually do. Because I think everybody understands when they go to the doctor, some of the uh, the, the, the areas where it seems like it's dragging and, and, and all of that. So you'll see how we can actually improve the performance of the doctor's office by actually having this in their office there of iClaim. And what you're going to do is, I think, Patrick, just the last couple of days, everybody in the class gets actual hands-on training just to get started uh, in the week of training. Yeah, we bring in the laptops and provide those during the week so that they uh, can actually get real hands-on experience. Now, you're not sending anything really to, to an insurance company or to Medicare, of course. They're fake claims. But you are logged on to the actual cloud-based system using the Wi-Fi connection that the hotel provides there. Everybody in the room is actually logged into the system doing the billing. And... Uh, Everybody's just blown away about how simple and how user-friendly it is. This is the easiest part of the business, folks. Uh, we'll get to the harder part here as we get into the marketing <laughs> section. But, yeah, we, we do hands on through that process. Yeah, it's always the same thing for us hard. But uh, here's you're going to learn how to put in patient information. This other piece of paper over there looks like all those numbers. Folks, that's all the codes that the doctors actually give you. And, and Patrick, I know a lot of people get a little afraid because they think they have to know coding. Uh, it, if, I, if I see this right, if the doctor are giving me the codes, it's not I that has to know coding. It's the doctor that has to know coding. Yeah, this is called a super bill, and every doctor's use, uh, office uses something similar to this. You may not have noticed when you check out, but they've got some of those numbers circled there. Well, everything mm -hmm. that could go wrong with the human body has a number, a code now, and everything that the doctor could do to help the doctor, uh, the patient get well also has a number. And with those two sets of numbers, uh, the doctor can uh, tell the insurance company what they did without having to write it out each time. The numbers just make it a lot simpler there. But they provide that to you. So they give you a sheet here with those circled, and that, that's what, that's the data that you're actually putting into our system right there, just those two pieces of paper for each yep, client. Absolutely. You'll, you'll, you'll see that and actually have hands-on training how to do that. You're going to find out, wow, this is not as difficult as I thought it was. So, uh, yes, well, so there's that. There's that 1500 form that I mentioned earlier, Eric. That That is the picture of it. And as you can see, there's very little data on there that needs to be put in, but that's what's actually uh, put into our system. Yeah, absolutely. And, and again, each step of the way, we're, we're, you're learning how to do everything. And I mean, not just the hands-on part of it, but I mean, there's activities that I know that Cynthia puts together uh, and, and all the different training, and you teaching the marketing side of it. You're yeah, really getting a, some real it's hands-on. It's, a, it's a real workshop, yeah. yeah you're not just yeah. getting the book, book information here. This is from her live experience running her own business for the last eight years, and, of course, our knowledge as the, the people who created the whole system. Uh, Eric is participating in it. Uh, there, there's hands-on exercises uh, from the, ex the licensees. You actually interact with other people in the classroom to come up with projects and numbers and things, and so... You're, it's a learning situation like unlike anything you've ever seen. Yeah, most, most but in Patrick, you and I are basically from the corporate training world, and we get a lot of people that have actually gone through corporate training, and most people that, that have gone through some type of training and come to our training, they're going, whatever you guys have done, you, you, you're doing it right, just simply because of the, the information that, that people walk away with. Yeah. Uh, Eric, let me get back to a question here. Pooja said something in IT. It says IT has better interface with all different EHR of the medical offices. 
I think what he's asking or maybe stating there is, does our interface with other electronic health record systems? And the answer to that is that yes, you can get the data from an existing electronic health record system into ours. Now there's a fee for that because they have to map it and get all the data correctly in there, but it can be done. Uh, what we tell people is that if a doctor wants to continue using their own EHR system, that's fine. They can do that too, and we can still do their billing. So either way, it works. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Admin says, why are you not doing this business? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I don't know if you, uh, it's talking to you or me, but let's just answer it together. Admin, sure. we, we could be in this business, but you know, to sign up every doctor in the United States would take a lot of work on our part. We don't want to work that hard. We just basically teach other people like yourself to go out and find the clients in their area. Now we make a few pennies on each one of those transactions that are going through our system. So the more people out there doing the billing for doctors, the more we make. Yeah. So if that answers your question, we've just decided to focus on the training uh, and the support of our existing licensees. My wife started doing the billing back there in 1987, as I mentioned earlier, but we sold all of our accounts once we started training and teaching other people because we didn't want to be in competition with them. Yeah, yeah, and so admin, we're the reason we don't do this for ourselves and this business is because our business is actually to help our licensees. When we help our licensees, you're winning, the doctor's winning, and in return, reciprocated back, we're winning here as well. All right, All right so let's talk about the other part of it. And that's the EMRX. This is the for some people still may not know. This is the electronic med medical record side of everything. This is where the doctors inputting all of their information. Um, so that's we kind of give some some overview about that too as well during the during the training class. Yeah, there, there's a a few years back the government came up with some rules and said, look, uh, here's some incentive money if you want to get into electronic medical records. See, they want to get everything uh, electric electronic uh, off of the paper. Uh, doctors still have the option that they don't have to do that, but they are penalized if they don't. So most doctors are trying to use some sort of electronic medical record system. And so there's dozens of them out there. Ours just happens to be, we feel like, the best. And I guess, Eric, we I don't think we talk about this in the slides, but we, we actually have one of the most unique features of ours is that the clearinghouse, which is normally a third party that you have to send the claims to, that's built into our system. So you don't have to send it to a third party. We do all the scrubbing and reformatting of that data ourselves to make, and that's why our rejection rate for claims is less than 2%. And yeah. uh, most doctors have a, a 30, 35% rejection rate. So we can, we can definitely get more money in the doctor's pocket by uh, utilizing our leading edge uh, cloud-based system. So let's talk a little bit about some of the other ancillary. These are kind of what you would call ancillary or supporting um, uh, services that go right along with iClaim and EMRX. Yeah, and so let's start with this one. This is Code Right. Uh, we talked about codes earlier, folks, but basically we have a powerful web-based application that opens up a huge market for you as a licensee because you can offer coding support services to the medical providers. They could go out and hire their own and pay them $40,000 a year, but you can provide that through this Code Right service. How? We have certified professional coders who do all that work for you. And what we do is we take the medical charts, securely scan into a coder's work queue, and they do the coding. So if the doctor doesn't have the right codes or would like to see if they're using the correct codes or if there's a better code, we can provide that service. You can to the doctors and make money on it. Yeah, no doubt about it. And one that kind of goes right along with that one, another way of utilizing our certified medical coders, our professional coders that we have here is to do what's called an audit guard or what's an audit on what currently the doctors are using as their uh, their codes because what you'll find out sometimes is that the doctors are not using the correct codes for the proper reimbursements. You'll find out that you can see here right here we can see we can improve reimbursements by utilizing this particular service because sometimes the doctors are, are so worried about Medicare and they're, they're worried about whether they're going to get audited for Medicare and if they get audited, did they use the right code and if they didn't, are they going to, Medicare going to come back and ask for that money back? This is a great way to talk with, uh, as you're doing your marketing or anything else, let people know you've got certified professional coders that can actually do audits on the current codes that the doctors are currently using. Yeah, this is a big fear that doctors have because uh, Medicare can literally show up out of the blue one day and say, 
give us 50 of your charts, we're going to look at them and see if you've been coding correctly, and if they haven't, they can be fined up to $10,000 for each code that the doctor was using wrong or over coding, it's called. And yeah. so Audit Guard provides that service to give the doctor a uh, uh, let's him sleep at night and know that those have already been looked at. <laughs> and, then, and and Patrick, these are these next two, two are again just some cash flow type uh, services again to kind of help make sure that kind of sometimes even jumpstart the doctor's cash flow going going here. What about all these uh, charges that that are left up to the patient and they've got to. How do we collect that? I know a lot of people worry about, especially getting into this business, whether they are going to be the collection agency. <laughs> yeah. No, you'll never pick up the phone and tell little Mrs. Jones, hey, send in that $20, you know, for the doctor. No. But we do have a, an automated online system using specialized software that can go and actually send out letters to the patients to collect that money. Now, we're not a collection agency, but look at these statistics. Doctors only collect about half of everything they bill to doctors, I mean to patients. Think about that, Eric. Only half of that money ever comes in. They have to write it off at the end of the year, which they'd rather have the money, right? And, oh, and, and oh, yet this service can collect up to 98% of those outstanding balances without the need for a collection agency. It's a, it's a right. marvelous, wonderful system that if we can, and, and by the way, not just doctors, you can market this to any business in your whole community that has a problem collecting their money. You got it. Uh, before we get too far off from our coding part of it, uh, Shane had a question here. Uh, is asking what's the turnaround for the coders to complete the review and return uh, claims for billing? It's it's about 24 hours. It's, it's you get it, you get what you need from the doctor's office. You get it to the coders. They get it. By the time you wake up the next morning, you have everything ready to go. Uh, you may be getting that back to for you to do the billing or the information back to the doctor. Obviously, if you're there doing an audit, that may take three to five days, depending upon what's going on there. But just regular codes, that can be done within 24 hours. You bet. All right, choice pay is another cash flow type thing here, Patrick. You want to kind of talk a little bit about what this is all about here as well? Yeah. You see, uh, the Affordable Care Act means that the patient deductibles have increased, and some individuals are simply cash pay patients. You notice how I'm just reading this. <laughs> you know, and we, have, we have what's called an online portal for choice pay that allows the patient to decide how and when they make the patient uh, payments to the doctor. So it's a wonderful online way of the patient feeling like they have options, they have choices in how they want to pay the doctor. Uh, it's just a marvelous system that has increased the revenue for doctors. And again, we can't go into the details about all these on this webinar, but you can go to our website and, and read more about it and in the virtual brochure that Eric talked about earlier. And what about all that paperwork? I thought we were getting away from paper. Isn't that what we're supposed to be doing, getting away from paper, getting paper out of the office? We're supposed to, but the government still has some regulations about the doctors keeping the records for a, a minimum of seven years. And you can offer a secure online resource to practices that's 100% HIPAA compliant, and they can scan all of their documents from their past visits from patients into this system and retrieve them from anywhere in the world. It's a cloud-based system. It's all HIPAA compliant. Uh, it's backed up securely. It has redundancy just like our system has. And it is a wonderful one. Eric, as you know, people can come to our office and they see no file cabinets whatsoever anywhere because we utilize it. Every piece of paper is scanned into this system and I can retrieve it from I can use my iPhone to retrieve any one of the documents that have come into our office from anywhere, yeah. anytime, even if I was on a cruise. And folks, then on top of all of that, then we have all the materials that go along with uh, your, your, how, how each one of these works. I mean, folks, I mean, I mean, Patrick, if, if people want to get started in medical billing, they would have to do all of their marketing pieces to the, by themselves. We've got all of this. A lot of this can be customized with their num their phone numbers and all of their their contact information, including the books here too, as we can see. Yeah, Eric, you know it cost us about twenty five, thirty thousand dollars for each one of the books to have those written and published and edited and so forth. And uh, and then we have uh, all these professional marketing materials could could cost you thousands of dollars. Now, folks, yes, you could print a, a flyer of some kind uh, on your 
inkjet printer at home, but you're not going to look like you are a professional company. These are professionally designed, all on slick paper. There's postcards, there's a flip chart, there's ebooks that you can send by email. We've got all kinds of tools that we go through in our, in our marketing section uh, that go into detail as to how to use these to get past the gatekeeper and to the doctor, him or herself. Uh, that's who you want to engage with, and we'll show you how to do that. Yeah, so that's just a uh, scratch and service there. And then you've got the websites that actually are, uh, can, you can customize to what, how you want them to look like, what colors, the colors, color schemes of your of your logos that you have, but all the content. Patrick, I think one of the big, biggest people problems that people have with websites is they don't know what to actually put in a website. We, we, have, or we already have all of that in there for them. Yeah, behind every one of those little menu choices you see in these uh, sample templates here are all the data, all the photos, the diagrams, the everything that you need to explain what you do to doctors. And it's a way to get an instant presence. Folks, when you get into business, you don't want to get bogged down in this. This could cost you thousands of dollars to develop a website and right. take you months to get it exactly the way you want it. We've got it ready to go. We brand it with your name and your logo, and boom, you're in business. <laughs> And then, uh, I mean, we're in the, we live in the world of social media. There's no doubt about it. I mean, whether you're Facebook, Twitter, Google+, whatever, in, in LinkedIn, any of these can be used to help you get business. And, and Patrick, we know a lot of people that just start doing this type of marketing, and the doctors are out there looking, especially in LinkedIn. Uh, tons of doctors are out there, and they're, they, after hours, the doctors are looking for help, and sometimes they can come across a blog that you posted or some type of help or one of the books that we have posted back over here. I'll kind of go back a little bit. I mean, even if you had a section from one of these books and you just kind of blogged a little bit about that book, Patrick, this is, this is what doctors are looking for. Yeah. We have a direct mail marketing. You saw the postcards earlier. There they all are. We've designed those specifically, and we have a system, an online system, that can send those cards out automatically once a month to your leads, your good prospects that are out there, where you don't even have to think about it. It's a wonderful system. We can't go into it in detail here right now. But anyway, that's one of those things that are out there. Shane, thank you. That was Instagram. Thank you. That was oh, Instagram. Instagram. Okay, <laughs> Instagram. All right, that makes <laughs> And Patrick, you talk about business networking here. I mean, this is just who knows who. I mean, this is where it, what we probably see the biggest and the quickest way that people actually get doctors. Yeah, but you know, it's also the biggest uh, mistake that people make is in going out and doing what they call business networking the wrong way. And I started a networking group here in the Dallas Fort Worth area a few years back in order to find out what is the best way to do business networking. And believe me, it's not what they teach you in most of those meetings you go to at the Chamber of Commerce. This is completely different, and we have a very unique way of connecting you with the people in your community who can introduce you to the doctors. So that's yeah. what that's all about, starting with your warm market, by the way. But anyway, that's a whole other session. <laughs> And then for those that want to go big and go bold, uh, we actually have a trade show marketing campaign. We got that even set up for, for yes, us. Yes, we've got the booths designed already. We spent $5,000 for that one you see in the back there. Uh, but you can borrow these basically. doesn't cost you anything except for the shipping back and forth. And uh, you can borrow these anytime you have, you know, you, re you reserve them for us. And then we ship those out. We also have the, uh, the tabletop one you see there on the right as well. Uh, so, uh, Eric, there's a couple of other pictures I think you've got there of people actually using these. But, folks, this is a wonderful way to let you go to, and it doesn't have to be a medical trade show, by the way. We'll show you how you can set this up in a, an auto show, a home and garden show, and there are doctors, of course, who go to those, and they'll stop and engage with you. It's a wonderful way to get people to come to you, and you're, you're just having people walk by and, and talk to you about that, and you hand them out some literature or a book or something and get their contact information, of course, to follow up with. So. Got it. Here's a, here's a picture. Next one is a, of a couple that's actually using uh, that, that same booth there, but in a smaller area. They, you, know, you can get a 10 by 10 uh, square uh, space there for a little bit of nothing at most of these trade shows. Depends on you know where it's at. And this one looks like at the Texas Medical Association. So, folks, I mean, there are there are so many different types of shows, trade shows you can go and You talk about have doctors and everybody come to you. This is This is one of the ways to be able to do that. And if you're scared to death to do marketing, you can use sales reps. 
Yeah, folks, we have a whole program uh, for sales reps. There are people, believe it or not, who love to go out and market, and some of them are marketing to doctors right now. So we, we're going to train you step by step uh, how to find those people that are out there, how to interview them, how to hire them, train them, uh, pay them, uh, and of course even motivate them. So all of that's included in our training for you to help you find those people that can go out there and get as many clients as you need and bring them to you. There's one more okay. motivator. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, Ron's got a great question here. We'll get to this one real quickly, Ron. You've got a couple of them. Uh, is it safe to assume that when you bill the doctors for a service that runs 30 to 45 days out? No, uh, Ron, not with, not with our systems. We have, we have licensees that bill every two weeks to a doctor. And if the doctor hasn't paid the bill by the, you know, the second week, then they don't, you know, they stop billing. They go back and say, well, you know, we're, we're going to continue billing as soon as we get payment on that. It's, it's very rare that it, that happens. Uh, you'd be surprised how the systems that we have actually work to help you get your money as well. Right. And then uh, he asked another question, do we bill them or does ABS bill, bill to collect those for those payments? You'll be billing the doctors. In our system, uh, a report can be generated that shows you exactly what you collected for the doctor. And so you take that number times 6%, 7%, 8%, whatever it is you're billing and, uh, and, and charging, and then just generate an invoice. Basically, with a simple invoicing program, we've got several we recommend during the training that you can use to send out that invoice. And uh, yeah, and they can even, they can even pay it by credit card and uh, or have it money taken right out of their checking account. Yeah. All right, let's. Uh, we got a few more slides to get to, Patrick. I know we want to kind of wrap up the slides, and then we'll spend a little bit more time. So we've got about six more minutes to the hour, uh, but. One of the things you're going to learn has, is how to do consultative marketing. This, this is the key here, really, Patrick. Once, you, once you've got a doctor that kind of says, yeah, I might want to at least talk with you, practice analysis questionnaire must be engaged. Yeah, folks, we came up with this over the past 22 years. It's been you know, added to, in fact, it's about three pages now. But these are the questions that you need to ask to find out the information that you'll need to go back to your office and make the proposal for the doctor. So we're going to guide you through this. In the training, we go through this question by question and teach you what the questions mean, what answers you can expect, and how to get that information out of the doctor's office. Their system mm -hmm. uh, questions like, is your current system server-based or web-based? Uh, how many claims do you do a month? Uh, what are you currently spending on billing? We'll, we'll, we'll show you how to get those questions answered. And it's usually the office manager that knows most of those questions anyway, so you'll do this with the office manager usually. And then you right. come back to the office and prepare what we call our uh, proposal. And we have that already templated for you, meaning you just open up a Word document, you make the few changes that you might need to make it yours, and uh, there you've got a very professional-looking proposal for uh, taking it back to the doctor. We have a nice presentation folder. You take it back there with some, maybe some flyers stuck inside of it, and it will blow them away. When they see how professional you are in the way you make your presentation, uh, they'll be signing up with you left and right. Yeah, absolutely, and, and and like Patrick said, a lot of people try to put all this out on inkjet printers, or they try to put something together, and then they maybe even take it down to Kinkos or whatever. And you're gonna find out that your printing costs are gonna be astronomical, especially if you try to do it high quality. We we already have that. That's already done. The the folders, the 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 proposal, the, the, the everything is there for you uh, to help you get that taken care of. And, and again, whenever it all bring comes together, this is probably the best part of being an ABS licensee right here. Yes, uh, this is illustrating, as you can see, you at your computer, the doctor on the right hand side at their computer, and us, that's ABS, actually doing what's called a live demo. We show them the system that you'll be using to collect their money and how they can use it to see their reports and so forth and stay in contact with you and it just blows them away. Eric, uh, every time we do this, the doctors just are wild by it, aren't they? Yes. Once we start to show them how easy this can be, uh, just how you know they can be able to capture all that, I cannot tell you how many times that I, even whenever I get to do them, because I do them quite frequently, how often I hear the doctor or their staff going, wow, I cannot believe <laughs> That the system actually does what, it's, what we were just showing them that it can yeah, do. There's things, folks, that we, we can't go into in this webinar just for lack of time, but believe me, they are they're blown away. Okay, Eric, uh, support. I think that's important to people that they'll learn about our support department. Uh, there, there's there's uh, We have over 100 people along with our technology partners 
uh, from coast to coast that can help uh, our licensees. This is our, one of our actual support centers. And so, folks, you'll have the hand-holding that you need through every step of the way in building your business. We have support for, uh, we have coaching, we have hands-on coaching, we have, uh, uh, we use GoToMeeting like this to uh, engage with people through video. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's very, okay, so we're moving on to the guarantee. The guarantee is basically this. Come to our training, you don't like it, you get your money back. There you go. That really is about it. <laughs> Really, there's no weasel words in our guarantee. This is exactly right out of our agreement that you'll sign. And it, it really means what it says, folks. It says for any reason. It could be for no reason. You just go, you know, I, I want my money back. It doesn't matter. Now, we've done that a handful of times over the last 22 years, folks, because there are some specialized things that have come up in people's lives while they're here, for example. But it's never about what we've presented, uh, the, the fact that we lied to them or something. You will be so excited by about, well, it's actually about midday Wednesday that people go, oh, I get it now. And why aren't yeah. you charging more for this? Right. <laughs> and by the way, speaking of that, Eric, <laughs> as you know, our board of directors have decided to go up on this license fee. So it is going up at the first of the year. So. Uh...